This network's poll indicates a major victory for Adam Warner. We go now to the Commodore Ballroom where Warner supporters are beginning to congregate for the anticipated victory celebration. We can make out the candidate's wife and close associates, but so far there has been no word regarding Adam Warner. And now to the Edison Hotel, the headquarters of Robert DeSalvo. It's a very quiet Too bad there's no death penalty for losing. Robert hey, don't shut it off. Let's see him concede. Don't want to see him do anything except... Well, no. The baby is going to make an exit. Oh, I'll take him, Mrs. Mackey. Well, first he has to get a bath. Uh, you take him, Mrs. Mackey. <laughs> <laughs> Bathing kids is not my strong point. My expertise ends at frolicking. Oh, boy, look at that face. Cake and all. I love it. I'll see you in a minute, okay? <laughs> Here, Josh. One for the road. <laughs> Well, let's watch the next senator act grateful and humble. No. I really don't want to know too much more about winners and losers. Well, Adam Warner is the real loser. To have a child like Joshua and not even know it. If it were me... We agreed not to discuss Joshua's father, ever. That child is adopted by me, legally. Okay. You shut him off. But if you shut him out... I'm sure trying. Sometimes I think I'd be better off with an animal like Michael Moretti. A simple, straightforward, lifetime brawl. Jennifer, please, stay away from him. I'll try, Ken. Look, I'm uh, gonna go upstairs and kiss the kid goodnight. I'll be up in a minute. I hear you're tough, Park. You don't look it. I hear you're tough, McGuire. You look it. <laughs> a broken nose is all you need. Coffee? No, thank you. Some good Irish whiskey. No. Connie Garrett case. A couple of years ago, right? The lady supposedly hit by a truck. As I recall, she lost the case and the appeal. We're going to file for a new trial. Really? On what grounds? Complete disclosure. I'm requesting a reopening on failure to disclose all relevant facts gathered by both parties. Oh, yes. The business about the breaks. Parker, you would have to prove that the same truck involved in the accident had a faulty brake system. All we have to prove is what a bad safety record those trucks have generally, and that you did not reveal the established fact that some models were defective. What is it that you're proposing? I have a client in her early 20s who's sitting in a room she'll never leave for the rest of her life. Although you and I know that there is no settlement that can compensate... Parker, the only thing that you and I know together is that you want money for your client, and I don't want to give you a dime from my client. What kind of settlement are we talking about? Two million dollars. <laughs> well, that's a great deal of money for somebody with no case. If you force us to go back to trial, we're going for five million dollars. Are you sure you don't want a whiskey? No, thank you. Sit down. I haven't said no. You haven't said yes, either. Two million dollars is a mountain of money, Miss Parker. Now, if we were talking about a lesser amount, I might... You really want two million, don't you? I really want five million. <laughs> All right. I suppose we might be able to arrange something. Now, I have to leave for London in the morning, but I'll be back next week. Not a serious business. Lunch. Why don't we wait? You can hand that check to me over a beautiful chef salad.
you can still float through doors. No security, let me in. For how much? Nothing. A client of mine bought this building. Good price. Before Ken and I moved in? Afterwards. The property was greatly enhanced. Do you, uh, do you think about Adam Warner these days? I think about you a lot. Michael, you're much too brilliant, much too sophisticated. You want something so bad? You're pursuing some kind of fantasy, some illusion. You don't have to answer every phone to be a success. Do you know that? Please, don't touch me like that. Parker. You're about ready to explode. Michael, please don't come to this office again. You want me to come to your house? No. That's why I came here. Well, I've kept you from your work long enough. Jennifer, your phone's ringing. You should, uh, you should answer it. Your health counselor? And yours. How was London? Always wonderful. <laughs> For me, I mean. For the English, not so hot. <laughs> Get to see the menu, Mr. McGuire. Thank you, Paul. It's true. One tires of London, one is tired of life. Samuel Pepys' diaries. Samuel Johnson. Did you bring the check? Remember, we want two million. We don't want to go back to court, but we will. You can't go back to court. You can never go back to court on this one. The statute of limitations is up today. But we had a deal. We had nothing. Too late, counselor. Court is already closed. Sorry, friend. There just ain't no justice between lawyers. Now, how about a writ staying implementation? Can't get of... a writ on statute of limitations. Even for fraud? There is no fraud. Just my stupidity. Connie Garrett counted on me. Did you check the dates? Maybe McGuire. Today is it. Damn. We just had six more hours. Five even. If we had five or six more hours, we wouldn't be sitting here looking for a miracle. We'd be presenting a check to Connie Garrett, a lovely fee for us, then a holiday to celebrate. Mm, a holiday? Where would we have gone? I don't know. Maybe Hawaii. I always wanted to do Hawaii. <laughs> and so, gentlemen, sick transit Gloria Jennifer Parker, attorney at law. It's the Parker lady. Probably wants a job. Okay, put her on. Hello, Parker. You missed a great dinner. <laughs> I see. You had a very productive evening anyway. <laughs> mm. Mm. Still want to settle out of court. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> really? Still only want two million. Now, listen, Parker, I've gone along with this farce long. You what? Uh, you what? I said we contacted a lawyer in Hawaii. Hawaii. The 50th estate. A most distinguished law firm in Honolulu. Honolulu. A large city of the United States where it is six hours earlier than New York. I think he's having a massive episode. Mr. McGuire, of course it's legal. As legal as your statute of limitations. My, my. Such naughty language from one of our distinguished attorneys and globetrotters. 
Relax, McGuire. You could still win this in court. Didn't I say we'd worked something out when I got back from London, Miss Parker? What'd you say? Didn't I? And after the settlement, you can go back to London. After all, McGuire, when one tires of London, one is tired of life. Goodbye, Counselor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, but the bigger the firm, the more prattle. We'll settle it nicely. Adam Warner keeps moving. One year in the Senate, and they've just made him chairman of the Subcommittee on Organized Crime. He'll do well. This guy, the uh, legal aid people ask us to see. Scanlon? Yeah, Jack Scanlon. Ugly stuff. Four-year-old girl, half a million ransom. Still, the girl wasn't hurt. I don't like kidnappers, Ken. Let's find out if he is a kidnapper, OK? Scanlon. Thank you. Not yet. Thank you for coming, Miss Parker. I've done a very foolish thing. And you did commit the act? You called? Kidnapping a little girl for ransom, a very foolish thing. I didn't kidnap Tammy for ransom. Well, why did you kidnap her? My wife, Evelyn, died in childbirth. People today don't realize how many women still die in childbirth. Evelyn wasn't strong. Our doctor advised her not to have a baby. She didn't listen. So she had the baby? They both died. It was like neither of them could afford to pay God's rent to stay here. <laughs> I didn't want to go on living without her. <clears throat> and? And, Mr. Scanlon? A few days ago, I saw a little girl playing on the street. It was as though Evelyn had been reincarnated. She had her eyes, her hair. I must have been out of my head. I, and I thought to myself, this is the daughter Evelyn would have had. This is our child. Please don't do that, Mr. Scanlon. I wouldn't have harmed that child for anything in the world. What about the ransom note? I didn't send a ransom note. The last thing in the world I cared about was money. All I wanted was little Tammy. Someone sent the family a note. The police keep saying I sent it. I didn't. Did the story of the kidnapping appear in the newspapers before or after you were picked up by the police? Before? I remember praying they would stop writing about it. So anyone could have read about the kidnapping and tried to collect a ransom? I don't know. All I know is I want to die. Then you don't need me. <laughs> Talk to me, damn it. I dragged myself all the way up here when I should be going home. Talk to me, Scanlon. Give me something. Something? I was born in North Dakota, on a farm. <laughs> Such a poor piece of land, nothing much one to grow on it. My mother's buried there. Seems the dust is always spitting on her grave. I know the Bible says it's wrong to speak evil of your parents, but my father was a frightening man. If I did the least little thing he thought was wrong, he'd whip me with a leather belt that had a big brass buckle on it. You have a family to go home to? A little boy, that's my whole family. That's enough. Do 
you think anybody will ever hold me tight and say, I love you, Jack Scanlon? I promise you, the man belongs in a hospital. Scanlon needs care. At least, sir, move him out of that jungle. They'll kill him. Kidnappers are animals, even to animals. The man needs treatment. Scanlon is a kidnapper. Ransom or no ransom? Jack Scanlon is a decent man with an indecent upbringing. You know he lost his wife and child? So it seems. Look, move him out of that place. I'm not asking for bail. I'd love to be in front of the judge when you did. I said I was not asking for bail. Jennifer, keep it down, will Keep you? it down? I have some poor heartbroken wreck squatting in Manhattan Correctional with a hundred guys dying to put a shiv in his heart, and you tell me to keep it down. I cannot request hospitalization for every criminal awaiting trial. Oh, Mr. DeSalva, let the doctors have a look at him. Let you know. Let me know? And that's all? Afraid so. Your Honor, her husband's testimony clearly proves that my client was indeed damaged emotionally as well as physically by that faulty, badly rigged scaffolding. Jennifer. Jen. And, and with that emotional damage has come a sense of deprivation. Jennifer. I feel a sense of deprivation myself. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. You were making some telling points, Counselor. Could we? I suppose so. Courts adjourn till 3 o'clock, if that's all right with you, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. I'll see you at 3. What's going on? What's going on? I was sailing toward a verdict. Jennifer. R. Scanlon is not Scanlon. Who is he? His name is Frank Jackson, age 38, born in San Francisco. His father was a pharmacist. His mother ran off to Canada with a mortician. At age 14, he broke into his father's storeroom, stole all the drugs he could get his hands on, and split. Sent to reformatory. Over the last 10 years, he's been arrested on charges ranging from pimping to armed robbery. And five years ago, Jackson kidnapped a three-year-old girl and sent a ransom note. Two months later, the girl's body was found in a wooded area. She'd been raped. God, DeSalva didn't buy my hospital plea. Let's get to a phone. Come on. Parker, you convinced me. I bought your watery story. I had him transferred for psychiatric evaluation. I did. He slashed one guard, almost killed another, and escaped. That's right, Parker. Your misunderstood, frightened little fellow is out. Out there in my town. I listen to you. He believed me about Scanlon. Joshua, I tried to stop him. I tried. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure you got home all right. Cause I made you late the other night. Where's my son?
cries a lot. It shouldn't cry. Please. Please, I, I'll do anything. You've already done everything. You were so nice to me. Then you had me moved. Moved. You knew what they do to me in Bellevue. You knew that they'd steal my brain. Pump the blood out of my body. You took my case so you could have me destroyed. Please. Please, I, I tried to help you. I'd like to hear you cry. Parker, I promise you, everyone is trying. Don't you understand? That man is going to kill Joshua, and nobody's doing a damn thing. Parker, everyone is in on this. They've got the bus stations, terminals, airports, all locked up. Anything? From what the FBI says, not yet. We know all about the FBI, the police. We race from agency to agency, so don't tell us about them. What about you? Parker, we're trying to be cooperative. We're not, strictly speaking, an apprehending agency. If they get Scanlon, I'll crucify him. I'll bury him. If they get him! Jennifer, Mr. DeSalva came down here tonight and answered to your... Please, Ben. What can I do? Mr. DeSalva, the boy is two years old. I've got kids of my own. But your kids are home! Look... I know you have a whole network of informers out there, informers that you do business with. A district attorney of Manhattan cannot function without a conspiracy of deals. <laughs> oh, you're not going to help me, are you? You still hate my guts. You're going to let my little boy... It's all right, Chief. She's hysterical. What should she be? Help me. The FBI doesn't have a clue. The police are nowhere. DeSalva's enjoying himself. You should go home and get some sleep. Will you help me? Do you want someone to drive you? Ken's waiting downstairs. Okay. Do you think there's a chance? Sure there's a chance. This one is expensive, Michael. More than money. You lose up favors, big favors. I'll pay back. I think we're almost out of time. Maybe not. People like Jackson, they like to stay in the papers. A little while, anyway. You do know, Michael, an army of nobodies has to be alert. If nobodies are trouble, they have to be watched forever. Every hooker, every waitress, every numbers runner, every vendor, every pimp, every cop on the street who's on the take will have to be alert. Jackson is visible, he'll be found. The little boy, that's different. That's sad. Thank you, Mr. Bernelli. Work with Tom Colfax on this. He has certain useful contacts. He won't lift a finger. Michael, I lift a finger. Thomas follows. Keep in touch. Are you enjoying this, Thomas? It has certain elements of drama. Boys. Get my boys. Get my so, boys. Captain Childress, what do you got on a 
thin blonde fellow who looks like Jesus. Frank Jackson's life story. I'm delighted to do this for you, but uh, the FBI has the same material. And my boys are using it to track that sicko down. Well, you and I read people differently, Captain. Much appreciated, Captain. Much. Much. Much appreciated. Okay. No, 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 keep looking. I don't sleep, you don't sleep. You're a good young fellow. You're too good. It's not you I despise, young fellow. You're pure now. If you go back to those people, you won't stay pure. I'm going to keep you pure. Mommy. Shh. Mommy's in hell, boy. She's deep in hell. She's in hell. Yeah. Captain Childress's files gave us a break. An old cellmate of Jackson's. A close, close friend in stir. I think he still loves Jackson. That's heartening. Where are you? You should help us. You should help your Frank. I've never been gonna Frank yet. Shut him up! Come on, get your feet down and light him up. Please! I don't want to be no eunuch! I don't want to be no eunuch! You become a eunuch, sir. I'm gonna remove your right eye. And you're gonna watch me with your left. So you're still gonna be able to look into a mirror and see what you've left in your mind. No, you won't. I don't know where he is! He has a sister. Where? Lives near Coney Island. She loves him. That's nice. That's the way you love him. Now, where does the sister work? And I want the actual address, please. Where are you going, Clara? None of your business. The night's take is $8.48. There ain't $10 worth of crap in the whole joint unless you're queer for garbage and brown water. We don't want nothing but you. This is a rape job. Be my guest. My doctor's treating me for gonorrhea. Where is your brother? You got no brother. I need to know where Frank is. Clara, you ever thought of going through life without any of the functions that could allow you to kiss? Because it's a life without movement, sight, or hearing. It's a life in a black, silent world. It's a life, Clara, that won't even allow you to hear yourself how a God to end it. You're still young. You've got a lot of years of silence screaming left in you. I need to know where your brother is. Dear God, I've come home with a prodigal son. 
we both come home to you after a journey of deep darkness and cruel white light. Pray, boy. It's time to go home. Pray. Boy, it's no time for fear. Get the kid. No. No. No, please. No! Anybody tells you to go to hell, Lewis, just tell them you've been there. She was very handsome. Yes, he is. I think he'll sleep for days. Mm. <laughs> Sweet dreams. weapon and the child. You don't ask questions. Did you have to use the SWAT team? Tell oh. Michael Bell. He gave it all to the cops. Quanto se bello. You're good. So damn good. There's no thank you big enough. Yes, there is. Enjoy your boy. Call me. When, Michael? Even if the cathedral drifts out of sight, you'll remember it. Just the other side of your heart. Why, Michael, you're an authentic romantic. Surprised? Is that why we checked in and started sightseeing immediately? We're not just sightseeing. We're starting the day together, slow. Easy. Why Paris? Oh, I like the scenery. And you need scenery for an affair? No, it's helpful for a love affair. Can't promise you that. I promise you. scarf you can. You only gave me 10 days. I could only get away for 10 days. I promised Joshua I'd be back. Who 
always been fond of this hotel. Obscure, quaint, expensive. Paris is a great city for expensive, quaint. Yeah, I've always enjoyed myself here. Of course, the owners want us to have dinner with them. Are they old and distinguished? Oh, they're killers. You know, I just have to see those gentlemen. You want to go on up? I'll be finished soon. Are they uh, business associates? Sometimes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It took longer than I thought it would. You look angry. No, I wasn't. It had a happy ending. I certainly wouldn't want you angry at me. I'm going to change my clothes. Why should I change? Say you love me. Say it. I want you, Michael. Tell me you love me. Want. Tell me. Want. Tell me. Parker and Bailey. She isn't back yet. Could you hold on, please? Parker and Bailey, please hold. I'll tell her that you called. Mm -hmm. Thank you for holding. May I help you? She isn't back yet, but I'll have her call you as soon as possible. You know, I liked everything better before. Before what? Before we got successful, I think. Boss, go away. We're very busy. I liked you better before, too, when we were still friends. <laughs> I'm an employee now. Don't have to be friendly. Parker and Bailey. She's still out of the country, but I'll have her call you as soon as she gets in. Parker and Bailey. She isn't back yet. I'll tell her that you called. Oh, I arranged tickets for the Met on Tuesday. Yeah, Pavarotti's doing well then. But afterwards, we could have supper at Sardi. Michael, we've just gotten home. It was lovely. You're a wonderful companion and an expert lover. But we're home. I have a child, a career. Her luggage, Lewis? I'm your career. Look at that tiger in the boat. Oh, and that jeep. Which one is What do you want in there? What? Ah, uh, Joshua wants the big jeep with the canoe on top. And the tiger and the giraffe. Well, then why don't you buy them for him? My parish can't even afford a FAO Schwartz catalog. He's big. Yes, right. But after you get him those things, and after he gets tired of them. Which will be in three months. Two. Then you can donate them to my parish. Wonderful. Father Ryan, God's very own con artist. An honorable role. Are you all right? You look fine. I'm fine. Hey, let's go by the jeep. The big one, okay? Yeah, big jeep. <laughs> all right, let's go get that jeep. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> fish in there. Fish. You want that too? You want it all. <laughs> no, 
knows what he wants. What's it all? And maybe it's your own. You can have it all. Hello. Uh, hello, Adam. Senator Warner, this is Mrs. Mackey and my friend, Father Ryan. Uh, an honor, Senator. Nice to meet all of you. And this is Joshua. Hi, Josh. Um, Mrs. Mackey, take Joshua into the store. I'll be in there. That's good. Hey, don't leave me behind. Bye, Josh. Bye, Mrs. Mackey. Father Ryan. Now, let's go get that cheese. I heard you moved back to town. Thought you liked the country. Mary Beth prefers the city. I've been reading more and more about you. I've been following your career. You've been seeing Michael Moretti a great deal. Adam, putting a tag on Moretti is not up to your standards. Not my tag. He belongs to the Senate Committee on Organized Crime. I'm merely the chairman of the subcommittee. Is that your daughter, the little girl? Yes. Moretti is totally without scruples. That's lovely. And your wife's still beautiful. And that little boy? Mine? Adopted, but very mine. Jennifer Moretti's a mobster. Camouflaged, protected, but still a mobster. He's a fine lawyer. I need to see you. Your wife is waving. Mary Beth's a great waver. Goodbye, Adam. So easy to say goodbye. Guess so. It's the damn reunions that hurt so much. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. Anything? Mm. Oh, yes. Johnson called about lunch. We are due at Jennison Salters in seven and a half minutes. They can wait. No, they can't. We requested the meeting. But they wanted it settled. Jennifer, you set the time. Get off my back, will you, Ken? I've got more to do than nursemaid. All right, Jennifer. He's up. I'm not the one that got us all these clients. I'm not the one who's complicating your life. No? Of course you didn't. I don't know. So much happening. Jennifer, please. Moretti will eat you alive. He's up to his eyeballs with the mob. Some people say he is the mob. Some people say Some that... Some people are jealous. Me? Jealous of Moretti? Why not? He's a brilliant lawyer, powerful. And altogether male. That's not what I said. I know what you said. Still, I do love you, Jenny. My father called me Jenny. God. I feel so funny. Nobody looks familiar anymore. Everybody seems to have gone away. That jungle out there has a way of looking ordinary for a while, and then fades out. And then it reminds you of its terror in most original ways. <laughs> He died peacefully. It was Mr. Grinelli's fervent ambition to die well. Oh, no one dies well. And they will all stumble into the dark like crippled beggars. 
pretty bleak picture, Michael. You got a brighter version? Don't I? Who drew up the new will? I did, of course. And the will is good. Valid, witnessed. I know what Mr. Grinelli had in mind, Tom. What he I'll had in mind, it. Michael, is not what's on paper. You know why Grinelli shifted on you? No, there was no shift. He saw a brilliant man, an iron man, turn into a sloppy, lovesick fanatic. Understand, you really confused Mr. Grinelli. First with that science fiction scenario about going quasi-legitimate. Second, your sentimental use of a, an entire apparatus to catch a punk. Well, Jackson, a punk? You used the entire organization because of a lady. Michael, Mr. Grinelli loved you. He also pitied you. He okayed the operation. He reluctantly allowed it. He felt he owed you your weakness. If he'd lived, he'd have been a guest in his house, but not a star in his organization. Michael, you're not out. You're too talented to be out. There are dozens of matters I can use your talents for. Michael, she'll destroy you. Jennifer Parker is mine, and so is the organization. Start a war with me. Mr. Cornelli is dead. He can't help you. No one but God can help you. supposed to meet me at the Manhattan Club. We had a date with Judge Fischetti. Remember? Don't worry. I, I handled the meeting with Fischetti, all right. Naturally. Come on. Uh, let's get out of this paper factory. I'll drive you to my house. We can still see Joshua before bed. Why? you love him. Kids love anybody that feeds them, plays with them. Want a drink? When did you start? Alcoholics don't start. They merely continue. Come on, Iron Pants, have a drink. Why? I'll understand. You will understand. You sanctimony is fraud. What will you understand? Hmm? You understand me? You understand going home at night, finding the same slipper in the same spot, on the same stain, on the same frayed rug? Do you understand coming home and finding <laughs> Yesterday's heartbreak staring at you through cankered tears. You understand loneliness and silence. Do you understand gay bars and happy couples? You understand leaving those bars still alone. Yet for a while I had you. And Joshua. At home. I thought I had home. But I've got. and your scars, and, and what else? What else, Jennifer? That was months and months ago. What else did you get me? Distance. Distance. 
A whole new Jennifer. No longer my friend. My partner. No. You came back from Paris with me. My cool, Moretti. Moretti, the no. fuck here. Oh. Moretti. He pulls the strings. How can you be with that man? Stop it! Don't! God, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. Jenny. My dear, sweet kid. My sweet, sweet friend. I, I love you so much. You're right. I didn't understand. Come home. Come home to your family. We'll say good night to Joshua. Then you'll have a, a nice bath and a proper dinner. And we'll talk. Remember your saying. Remember, he said that heaven lies at the gates of hell. Remember. Come on. Morning, Mrs. Mackey. Where's Joshua? In his room. He's having a giant time with those blocks Mr. Bailey bought him. Mr. Bailey come down here? Oh, he's probably going to sleep all day. We talked until 2 in the morning. Good talk. Mr. Bailey's already been down. He gulped some coffee, raced for the train, and said he'd a lot to do. On a Saturday? Ken's getting ambitious on me. Maybe I'll go in and help him out. Mr. Moretti's secretary called. And? Said to be in the lobby of the Schubert Theater, 7.30 sharp. What are you going to see? Nothing. Getting ambitious, aren't we? <gasps> and make sure the Gribbett's guardianship is put back at least three weeks. Ken was so excited about getting that guardianship. Did it all on his own. I can't believe it's only three months since. Oh, uh, I want the papers on the BK trustee ship sent to me in Acapulco. Airmail, Federal Express, whatever it takes to get to me overnight. You sure you don't want to take me to Acapulco? It is a bar convention. You should have a secretary. I swear, I won't enjoy it. Maybe I shouldn't go. Your plane ticket's just arrived. And my tourist card, what In about... your wallet, which is in your handbag, with your traveler's checks, pesos, and dollars. And the cab will pick you up at home. 7.30 tomorrow morning sharp. I don't want to leave Joshua. Oh. Go home. Your family's waiting. My family has shrunk him terribly. <laughs> It's true, there are hibiscus petals on the water. I swear, this whole place is for honeymooners who don't want to leave their rooms, or for unmarrieds who can't leave their rooms. And what delights today? Well, let's see. This afternoon, we have one U.S. Circuit Court judge, one professor from the Sorbonne, and New York State's venerable senior senator, Jonathan Wilkins. I think I'll go just to hear Wilkins. He's marvelous. And tonight, a little cruising? No. No, I do not intend to cruise. Too bad. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Sharon.
you very much. U.S. Senator Patrick Wilkins is to be our next speaker. Unfortunately, he had to withdraw. However, a colleague, a distinguished member of the New York Bar, has flown down here to substitute for him. I give you the dynamic and meteoric junior senator from New York, chairman of the Subcommittee on Organized Crime, the Honorable Adam Warner. very much. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Your instinct to walk out was correct. I even bored myself. Joshua's our son, isn't he? He's my son. You were merely the father. How did you get in here? I told the bellman we were together. He believed me. You are convincing. That boy. I need to know about my son. All right, Adam. I'll tell you about things. I had your son. You never told me. Why? I was not about to tear you in two. I would have ended up with a lesser part. So would have Mary Beth. You would have tried to be everything to both of us and disintegrated. Adam, you're not strong enough to give up anything. So I gave you up. We both prospered. I still want my son. You want everything. Whatever happened to my girl so Washington. What? She went away. Like Joshua. Like our son says. All gone, Mommy. Look, all gone. Please, Jennifer. A friend of mine loaned me his boat. We can do the harbor. It's a lovely motor set. That's nice. You'll love it. I have to go to a reception for me first. You want me to get ready? You'd be bored stiff. At the Yacht Club after 10. I'll wait for you there. Don't wait, Adam. Don't close me down, Jennifer. Not yet. Meet me there. Jen? I think I still love you. But I don't think I can meet you. You're a good senator, you know. But you're not a great senator. You should have been a great senator. Why? Because Mary Beth's eyes don't dance like yours. Stands you up and breaks your heart. I'll never let you go. Do you really believe me? Let me try. Please don't negotiate us out of not a bill going to conference. Damn it, I'm too bright to lose you again. Too normal to lose my son, so no more goodbyes. You won't go away forever again.
have to get back to the hotel. I have to be back in Washington tonight. And you? I'll be here a few more days. I'll call you. Welcome home, Miss Parker. Mr. Moretti is waiting to see you. Louis, I've just got. Mr. Moretti home. said it was a family matter. Something about the heirs of Frank Jackson. Just where is Mr. Moretti? I like your son. Because I also like your pale. I love this place. I ran in here once when I was a kid. I don't remember why. I think everyone was chasing me. Dark and light at the same time. Calms my nerves. What is this about the heirs of Frank Jackson? I've never seen you in the sun. The real hot sun. Never seen you swim. Yeah, I've seen you nude, but not, not naked. I have to go home. You must never leave me again. Michael, I intend to be free of you. How is Joshua? He's fine. I talk to him every day from Acapulco. You've got to be real careful. He's a fine fellow. I loved holding him. He sensed, you know, that I, that I saved his life. You save a person's life, you know, you got two obligations. I mean, always one from the person you save, but the other, it's, uh, it's more important. I can't, I don't save a life and then desert it. I must always protect Joshua from the heirs of Frank Jackson. The boy is famous now. But right out there in the dark, there's people that follow these matters. I want to put the boy into my protection. Are you the heir of Frank Jackson? The true heir? You're speaking of revenge, and I'm talking of love. What is it that you really want? 
What can I give you to keep you gentle? Title. Free and clear. What about a stale, Lewis? Van Berg. 49th and 3rd. That's my shirt's there, too. Oh, fine side. Yeah, you're improving. You got the blueprints on his house? Yeah. Has he got a mistress? No mistress. Wrong. You saw his mistress with him in Acapulco. You saw my property in his bed. He does run. Oh, yeah? Monday, Tuesday, and Friday runs three miles along the East River, ending up at 78th Street Overpass. Just for stretching exercises. Did you find the prospect? Nobody I really like yet. A man must be brought in from out of country. We need a reliable foreigner. That's a real tough contract, Lewis. Well, I'm working on it. There's no emergency. Oh, every day there's an emergency. I'm gonna keep it local. That's a mistake, Mr. Moretti. Why? I'll save some money. Don't hire some cheap hood. Never pay. Are you calling me a cheap hood? No. Please. This man is a United States Senator. They'll never stop looking. I'm perfect for him. Why? Why you, Mr. Moretti? I want him dead more than I want myself alive. And that's the picture of the perfect killer. I appreciate this, Counselor. Counselor. Attention, please. In 15 minutes, we will be having a lecture on the prehistory of Manhattan Island. Prehistory of Manhattan Island. You can make book the dinosaurs were on the take. OK, Koufax, I've messed up an entire morning schedule. What's so crucial to my interests? Miss Parker, you know all about me. Eh? Enough. I am not in the boom boom business. Oh? No. I do not engage in acts of violence, nor do I work with people who do. I plead your case to me, Colfax. Not a government agency, a crusading reporter. Not even much of a citizen these days. Michael Moretti is putting out a contract on Adam Warner. I will not have our business damaged by a lovesick madman. Why come to me? Both of your men, Adam Warner, and Michael Moretti. My men? Your men, Miss Parker. Your responsibility. I despise Michael Moretti. I despised a woman once with that same kind of intensity. I ended up by crawling at her like a dog, carrying her slippers in my mouth, barking on command. I was finally able to stand up at her funeral. Now, we don't want Adam Warner hurt. We don't want anyone hurt. It's terrible for business. I suggest you stop this intended assassination in any way you can. What about you? Why can't you stop it? Michael Moretti still has great reservoirs of affection within our industry. We're not ready to move against him now. As for Adam Warner, we can handle him politically. But you take care of his life. You take care of his life now. Look, I'm not a professional pest. I'm a friend, or trying to be. I've put in three calls to Senator Warner. No, I cannot tell you what it's about. It's personal. Then can I have his number in New York? All right, I see. Please, it is urgent that he call me.
mayor's rapping the president again. He's still not going to get any more money from Washington. So he raps. The president still thinks he's a lux. I think the mayor was just... Sorry to interrupt your breakfast, Mr. DeSalva, but your secretary and your chief of personnel said you've been tied up for days. Sit down. Good hey. idea. Good morning, Ben. You want some coffee? No, thank you. Adam Warner is going to be murdered. By who? The contract will come from Moretti. Oh, no. Now, why does Moretti intend to do away with Senator Warner? Because of me. Michael Moretti has an obsession about me. So do I. But I'm not about to order the murder of Adam Warner because of it. Where does this information come from? From close associates. Anything specific? When, where, how? I, I have nothing yet. Have you contacted Senator Warner? I, I've tried, but I can't reach him. Yeah, he's very busy. The crime. Jennifer, this is all ridiculous. Michael Moretti's a problem, granted, but no one in his right mind can consider Moretti a murderer or a potential murderer. They're all potential murderers, Ben. Take Miss Parker for a moment on the subject of me. Or take me for a moment on the subject of Miss Parker. The state is awash with heroes, ambitious heroes. Why me? Why me again, Parker? Firstly, you despise Michael Moretti. And you're an able man, perhaps the ablest in New York. You're gonna do nothing? You're gonna sit there and grin at me with your dead eyes and do nothing? I am going to do what has to be done. You're not really gonna listen to her, Chief. She's, She's a citizen with information about a potential homicide. I'll handle it, Parker. I think you will handle it. You're more than fair. Thank you for listening to me. Bye, Ben. Sorry to interrupt your breakfast. Chief, Jennifer Parker's thrown you a hundred curves. It's a walking health hazard. I really hate to see you get into this. Who's getting into it? The lady has humiliated me for the last time. Already putting out a contract on a United States senator. And I'm supposed to believe her. Yes? Moretti? Oh, t tell him that. Never mind. I better talk to him myself. Hello, Michael. Yes. A civilized ending? What are you talking about? All right. Where? Seven o'clock. Hi. Parker. If I'm not back when she arrives, she waits. Understand, Lewis? She waits. Understood. down here pretty fierce. True. Thanks, Mr. Murray. You understand we never met. You think I'm crazy? No. You're not crazy. So if it don't work out today, we'll try again. Anytime. Anytime. Hi, Senator. Hi. Good to see you out among the populace. 
can't get elected with these crowds. No, I'm sorry, I didn't vote for you. What? You got great legs and a cue for Hike. He did say seven. He's never kept me waiting before. Michael's very good about time. He is. Is Mr. Moretti all right, Lewis? He's very good. And you must wait. There's no argument, Miss Parker. You wait. Just where is Mr. Moretti? I know you know. Lewis, if something happens to Adam Warner, you'll go up. I swear to you, you'll go up as an accessory before, during, and after. I'll put you away for life plus forever. You'll be buried behind a brick wall with nobody there who'll even remember you were born. Now, where is Moretti? <laughs> She's been in surgery for five hours. Well, she's lost a great deal of blood. Should have been my blood. Look, it's going to be at least four more hours. I'll let you know. She has no right to make it. What do you mean, no right? I said, what do you mean, no right? She wanted you, Adam. I warned her. I kept warning her. I sent her notes. I, 
I even tried to hurt her, but she kept on seeing you. I thought she would go away, but she didn't. The final straw was her meeting you after she promised to let you go. She lied. She was trying to steal my life. Now, Aaron Beth, she stole nothing. There was really nothing to steal. I, I couldn't lose you. Don't you see, Adam? All my life I've tried to be somebody. And I've been nothing but a beautifully dressed mannequin. Please, Adam, please. You can be president of the United States one day. And I can watch. <laughs> Five minutes, Senator. You're Miss Parker's first visitor. We almost lost you. I'm pretty tough, Adam. I've been here every day. They told me. Most of those flowers are yours, aren't they? The party's all charged up. You're a hero. One dead Moretti does not a hero make. I, I think Michael wanted me to come over that night so he could tell me he'd killed you. I think he wanted to announce you were dead. He thought I would sit there tossily and wait for him. He didn't know you at all, did he? I think he knew a great deal about me. The papers say your party has celestial plans for you. Yep. <laughs> That's what they say. They also say that you might be put on the Foreign Relations Committee. That, that's very prestigious, isn't it? I guess so. Mary Beth? must be very proud of you. I'm going to tell Joshua one day. What are you going to tell him? Lots of things. Lots of magical things. And now what? After the hospital, after your convalescence, are you going to take over New York? Hmm. Even DeSalva would hire you again. Oh, boy. DeSalva. Believe me, you were next to dead once I asked him to help save your life. Come here. Come here, Senator. I'm the past, a vivid one, granted. But I'm an old love, Adam. And an old love can be a very dear one. Like you'll always be to me. Oh, Jenny. Jenny, my unique and special. Jennifer Parker, you are the most distinguished person I have ever met.
goes to the thrift shop. They can get at least 50 bucks for it. So can I. You're not a needy person. I will be. Stop complaining. You've got a six-month termination bonus and enough recommendations that should make you at least the president of something. Uh, that goes to Kelso. And that goes to... We got it, ma'am. That goes to Father Ryan's parish. Right. I'm never going to move again. I am going to squat in Washington State and never move again. I still can't believe that you're going. Giving up everything. I'll do all right at home. Joshua and I will do just fine. Don't go. Stop that. Okay, go. Who needs you? You New Yorkers. Just plain jelly in the crunch. I'll get it. Mrs. Mackey, watch the time. We're getting close. We're almost ready. What a mess. So you're off. Hi, Father Ryan. Come to help move furniture or rip off some? Take anything you have. We're a parish that converts anything and everything. I'll get Joshua and Mrs. Mackey ready. I have a tough one. No. I'm going home. You are home. Father Ryan, I'm through here. All finished. I'm going home. Joshua and I are heading west where we belong. This case is special. No. Well, at least hear me out. Maybe you could stay on a little longer and then go. Father Ryan, don't con a con artist. It won't help. The girl is 14. She's a mess. But if they put her away now, she'll be like Joan of Arc compared to what she'll come out as. No. Jennifer, if you could just meet her once, I could bring her out here. No, please don't. Promise me. No. But Jennifer, you're the best lawyer in the world for this case. I am always the best lawyer in the world for this case. She's such a... 